Thank you, Steve, for the introduction. And thank you all for being here. I'm really excited to tell you about the progress that we've made over the past year, which has been substantial in our preclinical data and our manufacturing work. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Avery Therapeutics, we're focused on tissue engineering approaches to regenerative medicine. And we're starting in the cardiac space. Within cardiac, our first indication is an in ischemic chronic heart failure. This tissue engineering platform can be applied to other tissue types. And we're also looking at other applications in the heart, like non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy and arrhythmia. And in the future, we hope to bring in other cell types to use for other non-cardiac applications. And we are looking for partners that have differentiation protocols and expertise in other tissue types outside of cardiac. So our first product, we call the Mycardia Engineered Cardiac Tissue. And this is Mycardia. This is a real-time video. The cardiac tissue beats spontaneously. And importantly, it beats synchronously. So those cardiomyocytes are communicating with each other effectively. And when we lay this on the heart, it results in an electrical improvement. So in ischemic heart failure, we're treating the heart after an MI, but years down the road after heart failure has developed. And we implant the myocardia graft over top of that ischemic area, so covering the majority of the left ventricle. And it's sutured in place. And we can deploy this minimally invasively. That's an important aspect of our technology is that we can do it using a robotic approach or a VATS approach. So it reduces the burden on the patient. And being able to cover that region broadly, we have a targeted delivery to the area of injury. So we've tested this in both rat and swine models of heart failure. And the swine were really key for showing the scalability of this technology to the clinical size and being able to demonstrate the same efficacy in swine as we saw in rats is one of the big accomplishments that we've had over the past year. And we see numerous improvements in the, the tissue level structure and microvessel density, improvements in blood flow, improvements in cardiomyocyte density in the previously infarcted area, as well as improvements in diastolic pressure, filling time, ejection fraction, reduction in chamber size, improvements in electrical stability of that tissue. In the swine, we've looked at scar size with MRI and seen a reduction in scar size. And also in the swine, we have looked at quality of life through the six-minute walk test and seen improvements in quality of life. And the mechanism is multimodal, working through electrical improvements through the broad contact, as well as regeneration through soluble factors. There's more than 200 different factors that we've assessed that are given off by this graft. And we're still working to fully understand the mechanism of action. Overall, we see 30% improvements in all of the key parameters that a cardiologist would be interested in seeing improvements in for their patients. And this 30% improvement is a substantial improvement that would correlate with a reduction in heart failure class and an improvement in quality of life. We have an excellent safety profile, no tumors, a safe immune response, and we actually see a reduction in arrhythmia potential compared to controls. Our IP and our competitive advantages are around the tissue composition. We have several issued patents around the cardiac tissue composition, and we filed in other areas outside of cardiac as well. We're using IPS-derived technology to create the cardiomyocytes, and we're also focused on closed system manufacturing for future scalability. This is going to be a huge enabler for us when it gets to the commercial stage that we'll be able to manufacture hundreds and thousands of products in a very small footprint with tight quality control. Another important part of our product is that it's cryopreserved. So we have the ability to make large batches, freeze it down, and ship it anywhere in the world where it needs to go. 
that's something that's unique to our tissue approach that our competitors haven't been able to cryopreserve their product. So now we have the proof of concept complete in the rats and the swine. We have finalized our product in terms of the materials, and we're now transitioning into the clinical grade materials and conducting IND enabling studies. And we're on track to submit our IND in the mid part of 2020 and start a phase one clinical trial in patients with heart failure. So now I will talk with yes, you. Yes, please. Thanks for, for that introduction and overview. So um, you mentioned, I mean, there's, there's some broad applications here, different indications, but you've obviously decided initially uh, to pursue ischemic heart failure. So why is that the best indication for your first indication? So we've decided to start in ischemic heart failure because there's a very large worldwide need. It's an area where drugs are not effective at stopping the progression of the disease. And it's a very expensive problem that causes a, a lot of cost to the healthcare system. And when these patients have no uh, other option, we want to be that, that option for those patients after drugs have failed. So it's really uh, started by, by the market need. We have the additional advantage of the excellent models of ischemic chronic heart failure. And the two models that we're using are the gold standard for heart failure. We've been able to show a substantial improvement in the function of these animals and, importantly, quality of life improvement. And so we think it's a good starting point for our product. And so in those two models, how, I mean, how, the product that you've actually used in um, rodents and then ultimately in swine, is it the same product? Or how, if not, how different is that graft? And then, uh, by extension, the product that you'll take into the clinic, how does that compare to those two preclinical uh, experiments? Yeah, the, the product that we're using in the rats and the swine is the same product that will be advancing into the clinical trial. So the product has a bioabsorbable scaffold that's seeded with fibroblast cells and cardiomyocytes, which are IPS-derived. And the, uh, the donor material and the scaffold material that we've used in the animal studies are the same as what we will be advancing into the clinical trial. Right now, we are in the process of converting all of our research grade manufacturing into GMP for the clinical trial. So we've manufactured the fibroblast cell bank. We're now getting started with the IPS bank and the cardiomyocyte bank, and we'll be transitioning our full process into clinical grade. Okay, and you mentioned you can freeze down the product and, and, and then obviously bank it, uh, eventually thaw it and use it. Are you freezing down the actual graft that we saw in the video, or are you freezing down the cells prior to generation of the graft? Yeah, yeah, that's graft? an important part of our process, and our manufacturing process is actually really flexible, that the cells that go into our product are stored frozen, and then when we make the graft, that full beading graft that I showed you, that also gets frozen down. And so we have the, the flexibility of manufacturing that graft in bulk and freezing it and storing it. And we've done studies that have compared the fresh product to the cryopreserved product, and we see the same efficacy. And the, the studies that we've done in swine, we're using the cryopreserved product. So we see that substantial benefit in swine using the cryopreserved product. I think that's, that's really important, obviously, and pretty interesting. Um, so I guess just um, as you think about or as you contemplate, obviously, starting the phase one study, what requirements are left for you guys to satisfy uh, prior to entering the clinic? So we're working on the clinical manufacturing to get it to the phase one GMP level, and then IND enabling studies to uh, do the, the final safety studies with the final product to get approval for the IND. OK, and, and um, regarding the phase one, I guess, then, um, do you have a draft design for that study? Um, and if so, I guess, what is the design? Yeah, we have a draft design for that. We have a really great clinical team. We've worked with 
cardiologists and cardio cardiac surgeons from the beginning of development of this technology, and we've looked at the patient population uh, and identified that those that are managed on the standard therapy, which are beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, diuretics, that have uh, optimal medical management but are declining in function would be the first patients that we would go after. And those would be patients that are in class three or class four heart failure. The patient population is very heterogeneous, so we're still working with our clinical team to further refine that patient population. We will be looking at the same types of information as we collected in our swine study. So we'll be looking at uh, the MRI and echo-derived indices of function, looking at uh, ejection fraction, chamber dimensions, scar size, um, and diastolic pressure. And then we'll also be collecting the quality of life information to look at the six-minute walk test and the heart failure questionnaire, and then we'll be looking for major adverse cardiac events and hospital readmissions. Great, and you, you mentioned mechanism briefly, um, and obviously you're still doing work there, but uh, it sounds like you have some idea of sort of what might be the contributing factors, uh, whether it's you know paracrine or, or uh, cell cell contact. I'd just be curious to hear your thoughts or more elaborated thoughts on what you know about the product and, and, and how it's benefiting. Yeah, so mechanism is multimodal, and what we understand about the mechanism so far is that there's an electrical component to it. So we put this electrically active graft on the outside of the heart, and it's bridging from viable to viable myocardium. And in the area where the infarct is located, we see an improvement in the electrical conduction through that area. So we see higher millivoltage amplitudes, we see an improved speed of conduction, and we see overall electrical stability. Patients with heart failure frequently will have sudden cardiac death from a fatal arrhythmia that occurs. And in the, the swine, we see a reduction in arrhythmia. And we actually have done programmed electrical stimulus in the animal studies to try and induce arrhythmias. And we see a 65% reduction in the ability to cause an arrhythmia in the animals once they've been treated. Great. And, and looking ahead, obviously, as you look to take this next step up to a clinical stage company, um, how's your financial position right now? And, and um, are you financed, I guess, to advance into and through phase one at this point? We've done a really great job with getting grants to support the preclinical work. We've had several million dollars of funding from the NIH and from the state of Arizona that enabled us to do the preclinical work in rats and swine, as well as get started on the clinical manufacturing work. We had an uh, investment round of $720,000 that also went towards that development work. And now we are doing a Series A in which we're raising money to get to the clinical trials. We do have a lead investor for that round, and we're talking to a number of other investors that are interested in participating in that round. And then we will be raising again to fund the clinical trials, and we have some interest there as well. Great. Well, um, it's great to see the progress, obviously, since we set up here uh, this time last year and, and looking forward to seeing where you guys go from here. So thanks again, Jen, for your time. Thank you. Yeah.